Hey everybody, Jason Spengler here, the Santee Swapper. I'm back with another unboxing. This one's gonna be kind of fun because the gentleman who sent me this collection had actually watched some of my unboxing videos and he even had fun kind of talking about me filming this unboxing video. He was looking forward to it. Uh, so hopefully I won't disappoint. Um, it's kind of a, a, a normal collection that I get, a collection where uh, an older scouter who had had a lot of fun doing scouting back in the day uh, and kept on to this stuff all through the years through moves and one family. Uh, but now at this point, doesn't really have anyone who's in his family that would be interested in it. And he just kind of wanted it to uh, go to a good home. And so he reached out to me and I gladly uh, made a deal with him to get this box of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it open and uh, we'll show you what's inside. This collection came out of Minnesota. And so it's coming to a warmer climate down here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We exchanged some pictures, so I have a little bit of an idea of what's in here, but not too, too much. Mostly we just talked on the phone and uh, shot some emails back and forth. So I thought you guys might enjoy seeing what's in here. Got a nice little album. We'll take a look at that in a second. We've got some things that are wrapped in paper here. Some more items. We'll take a look at those. Oh, wow, there's, there's quite a bit of stuff here. Wrapped up pretty carefully. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we'll kind of take this in stages. So let me kind of play with what we got here so far. All right. Okay, so in this first group, we have some belt buckles, obviously. Um, Gilwell, it's obviously being associated with uh, wood badge. We've got a nice old Philmont belt buckle, another wood badge belt buckle. Uh, this is kind of a classic the Boy Scouts put out that was the copy of the design of a um, postage stamp that came out. Northern Wisconsin, the National Canoe Base. And then let's see what this guy is. This looks like an old camp one. So Cherokee Hills, I'm betting that is a camp, um, probably from the 60s or 70s based on that design. Okay, let's put those aside. And let's see what's in here. Got more stuff to unwrap. It's like Christmas. Oh, I've seen a few of these. This is a little uh, desk weight and it's wood badge. So it's kind of designed to sit in right there and there's your little wood badge uh, ax like that. So that is a cool little gift for somebody. And then here's just simply a little handmade neckerchief slide. See where that's got the holes drilled in it. That'll make a neckerchief slide. Oh, those are really pretty. Check these out. Hand carved neckerchief slides with eagles on them. That is really pretty cool. It's really, really lightweight wood and really nicely carved. Um, this, I've dropped them. Uh, this eagle is kind of missing a foot here, but this one's uh, still in complete shape. So that's a nice little piece right there. Somebody will like that. Some more neckerchief slides, okay. So lay these out for everybody to see. Now, those of you who have been collecting for a while might know there's lots of different manufacturers and there's actually been some articles written about them. Oftentimes on the back right here, you can see the maker. And so this one, for example, was made by Torchy Plastics. That's kind of one of the makers. I recently read an article, although I cannot remember the name of the manufacturer who made these. They're kind of made on a sort of a composite material. It's not really a leather, but it's kind of a firm composite material. Uh, this is an OA one from Lodge 142, 1968 Area 7 Conclave. And then these as well are really pretty common. Lots of different ones, but this one was a Scatterama in 1957. And then these you can probably recognize with this resin mold color. Sometimes you'll find these painted. These are Neo slides, and those are collectible as well. Uh, this is another Neo slide. Now, Neo slides that are made for events are actually pretty rare. These ones that are kind of generic that would have been sold at a summer camp are not so rare. Again, another Neo slide you can tell by looking at that resin color on the back. So. Again, more wood badge paraphernalia. We can see that uh, EC would be East Central and see that there. Got some more here. Good old plastic bell there. Okay, let's see what's in here. Oh, okay, like a little, uh, they call this a McKenzie statue. There's a lot of those out there. This looks like a little topper for an award or something like that. And then right here, there is a little patch album. So real curious to see what's in here. This is kind of a 
a non-scout. I think Maritz or somebody made that beautiful American state patch here. Uh, so these are different activity patches, Salt Creek Central District. You can see kind of the time period here from the 1950s, some other events. Also patches on the backside, Turkey Run, Hubbard Trail, Camporee. Here's a 57 Jamboree patch. Some more Camporees here. Now these are uh, stapled in, so just kind of a little thing for collectors out there. Typically what you'll sometimes see is people will staple these things in there to keep them. Uh, collectors don't like to see patches with staples in them, but as long as they're not rusted, then it'll probably pull out okay and uh, really shouldn't, shouldn't uh, hurt the value too much. So some other ones there, kind of interesting. These are called first day covers. So this is a first day of issue and you can see it's stamped Washington, February 8th, 1960. So you might recognize that February 8th is probably that was the uh, celebration of the Boy Scouts birthday. And being that this was 1960, that was the 50th anniversary of the BSA. And so kind of cool there, this from the Plankshaw Council with the return address. And that one was actually mailed. And then there's another one as well. So there are some people that collect this kind of subset of scouting memorabilia. Um, that's kind of a neat little deal there. We'll keep going with the patches. I know some of you watching this are really into patches. Got some more event patches. You know, here going back to the uh, first day covers, these patches are pretty common from 1960. This is a Jubilee Camporee. So many, many councils issued this patch for their Camporees that year. And of course, the matching one is the 1960 Jamboree patch. Uh, that Jamboree was held out in Colorado Springs. Got some more event patches here. I actually like Explorer patches, so that's kind of cool to me, Explorer Camporee. Just checking that out. More event patches going through here. A couple of these like this one is a common stock uh, patch that was used by lots of councils for different Camporees and such. Sometimes you'll see them with the uh, words filled in. Some more Camperees. Okay, keep going. Over here we have a couple of position patches. Um, I confess that I always struggle a little bit with these guys to remember exactly which ones they are. Now, these, as far as I can remember the story, the ones with wreaths are people who are in the uh, commit who are commissioners. And I would have to go back and research, research and look at my reference books to figure out what the blue and gray versus the blue and, and gold is whether one is a neighborhood commissioner or a district commissioner, that kind of thing. Um, if these had had red with the wreath, it would have been a professional scout. So these are definitely volunteer commissioner patches uh, from quite a long time ago. A nice used Region 7 Explorer Canoe Base patch. Uh, similarly here, this is the next generation. So after these guys here, this style, then you start to see this style of patch. Um, this one, that looks to be a thread break. There should be some stuff there. Um, so that was chewed up. That's a, a physician patch. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a chaplain's aid. See the, the shepherd's hook there? Then over here we have, that's an assistant uh, scoutmaster patch actually says it there. That's a universal explorer patch. Then here's a couple of OA patches. So this is kind of interesting to see. Let me just kind of pull these out. Actually, I'm not going to pull them out because they're stapled. But uh, what's interesting to me about this is, is that these have a shrink wrap on them and they're stapled in here. So you know, back in the day, they didn't really have like modern day polypropylene sleeves or mylar sleeves, things like that. So what I would often see for old patches is people would sort of shrink wrap, shrink wrap them. And uh, so it's kind of neat to see that. So again, unfortunately, we kind of have the staple holes, which is kind of a ding for collectors, but uh, they're well, well preserved. Here's a uh, Lodge 170 patch from 1959. I'll have to research that a little bit. Walkie on right there and another round right here. Normally when they have a year on them like that, that's going to be an event patch. Um, but I'll have to do some research on that as well. Then coming over here, something I actually collect is conclave patches. And so a conclave is going to be a, ga a weekend gathering of OA lodges. And in this case, this really cool design shows you all of these feathers have names on them. Uh, Kiskakon, uh, Papa uh, Kitchi, sorry, Indian names, can't pronounce them, White Beaver, Ojibwa, Zingwak. These are the lodges that attended this 1969 conclave. And this was Area 7, and it was H, which would have been then the section, or uh, you know, like, like so 7H would have been the area with that. So 
really cool. That would definitely go in my collection. Uh, again, Walk Young. This is uh, Spring Projects. This is an event patch, some more event patches. This one probably had another patch right here that would complete the set. And then some more over here as well. So that's a that's a pretty good book. I like that. But we've got more stuff. So let me pull out here. we got a box right here. Good old fashioned compass game. Everything is really nicely packed, I'll say that. Okay, nice old box of patches. Let's see what's in here. That is a cool looking campery patch. Maybe not politically correct for uh, 2020, but old school nonetheless. These leather jamboree patches were meant to be sewn on packs. That's kind of what they're meant for. This actually has holes kind of pre-cut into it, you can kind of see. Got some more stuff coming out of the box here. Let's see what we got. Well, let's see what we got here. This is kind of fun. This is an old sterno. So you guys who have been in scouting will recognize this. And you can pop that open. And these little sterno tabs for dry fuel, as it says there, you'd put that down and you could put a, uh, your little pot on top of this and you could cook actually off of that flame. I, I confess I have never tried to do that. I ought to do it on one of my scout camping trips just to try it. But I have imagined it's not a very powerful flame, so it might take a while to actually get something cooking there. Here's a nice old belt. This is what they might call a Western style belt. It has an old style um, buckle. And depending on the link, oh, 30, 36, that's actually like an adult size. That's perfect. So that's a great size there. That could actually be reused. Nice little fork, knife, and spoon set. Scouter's key. Oh, okay, here's little pins and stuff. So there's your arrow dangle pin for being a member of the Order of the Arrow. And with that round one, we can tell that's a pretty old one. Yeah, here's a little charm, an Eagle Scout charm. This would have been like a mother's pin type thing, I'm guessing. So that looks like a tie clasp for a, this, a Scout veteran. Just some little jewelry pin pieces that they kept together. And then this looks to be an Eagle Scout case. Let's see if there's a metal in there. Yep, look at that. All right, boom. And that's kind of cool. He's got his other pins back here. That's a five-year veteran pin. And I think that is a Scoutmaster pin right there. Uh, then this is a rank pin. And then, of course, we have the Eagle Medal. Um, Eagle Medals are really interesting to collect. I do have a, a, a good collection of these. Essentially, the differences between all the different Eagle Medals are very, very slight. Um, sometimes you will have BSA stamped on the chest. Sometimes the back will be a different... Sometimes there'll be a maker's uh, mark underneath the scroll. There's like little differences that you can use to tell the difference between uh, different Eagle medals. But that's a really cool Eagle medal. Glad to get that. This is a patrol flag. And you can see this one has the names on it. So uh, that's kind of cool. A little piece of history there. A couple of neckerchiefs. This guy here, that looks like a conclave neckerchief. Again, it's from that council in Wisconsin. I'm sorry, not Wisconsin, Illinois. Get my councils right. Neckerchief from those guys. Commissioner staff from that council, which might make sense because we've seen several different commissioner type patches coming out of this collection already. Another camp neckerchief. Uh, this one's a little different looking. So that's a lodge neckerchief, but it has some really interesting um, letters on there. I'll have to research that one. That one's kind of cool, different type. And then this is a troop neckerchief, which you sometimes see those. Oh, okay. Yep. This is 1972. So this guy told me that he would uh, send me this silver beaver, which belonged to his dad. Um, that's kind of a really cool thing. You know, again, some of you might watch the video and say, well, gosh, why would anybody want to get rid of this? But it also, the conversation I had with him came down to, again, trying to find someone who would appreciate it and kind of understand the significance of the silver beaver. And certainly I do. Uh, my father earned the Silver Beaver in the council that I grew up in. But the Silver Beaver is the highest award that a council can give to a volunteer. And so it's a very, very special award. Typically, depending on the size of the council, only a handful of these are given out each year. And there's a committee that decides on it. So that is a very special thing. And he wrote me a note telling me that this was issued in 1972. So very excited to get that. Just a couple of last things. Here's a mug. I talked to him about mugs and I said, man, you know, the thing about mugs is it's almost not worth mailing them because they're, uh, a lot of mugs are really brittle and just not really that good. But he said he would send me a couple of them. Uh, challenge to Northwoods Adventure Region 7 Canoe Base. That's a cool looking mug. And then let's see what this is in here. Okay, 
this is this is what they call a trivet. So some of these national jamborees, they had trivets as one of the souvenir items they would sell in the trading post. So, well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I'm sorry that it was a little bit choppy. I actually had numerous phone calls uh, while I was trying to record this video. And so there's a couple of times I had to break the action and stitch it back together. But anyways, uh, this is a really fun collection. I was very excited to get it. I'm going to try to clean things up a little bit and uh, put away the pieces and uh, uh, kind of reach back out to the scouter and uh, try to make him a fair offer to buy this collection. If there's anything that you have sitting in your attic or basement or just old box of scouting stuff that you no longer want, uh, please reach out to me. Again, my name is Jason Spangler. I go by Santee Swapper on the internet. Uh, I'm an active collector and also I'm active in the scouting program, both on the troop level and as a camp director in the summertime. So I appreciate it very much. My website is scoutpatchcollectors.com. I'll put it here on the screen so you can see it. And uh, if you want to reach out to me, my email address that I use is santeeswapper at yahoo.com. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you watching. And if you want to see other unboxing videos, I have ooh, probably about 20 of them now on my YouTube channel. Uh, they're all different. They're all very individual from the, the experiences that the scouters had. And uh, there's some surprises in there as well. Thanks very much.